Is your dog chronically licking and scratching, recurring ear infection, redness and itchiness in the groin? You've tried everything. Steroids from the vet, apical from the vet, natural remedies from Dr. Jones. Nothing is working. Here are the steps that I would take with Pippi. Here's what you can do at home. Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. Click there to subscribe. Hit the bell to sign up for notifications. And then when you click the link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book. I got this question recently from a subscriber. You've got a dog that has atopy, environmental allergy. He or she just won't stop licking, itching, scratching in spite of trying the veterinary treatments, the steroids, Apoquil, etc. Trying the home remedies. You're like, Dr. Jones, what's going on? What else can I do? Allergies in our dogs are dang hard to treat and they're multifactorial. Like there's many, many different things going on that could be causing the itching. Let's talk about things why your dog may not be responding to treatments. Number one, let's rule out external parasites. Two of you probably treated for fleas, you know, lice, another external parasite. They can cause this intense itching. And one that less of you are gonna know about, it's a type of mange mite called sarcoptic mange. A sarcoptic mange, that's the little critter what the mite looks like. Often I would see it in young dogs, they've been in a kennel, and they're exposed to a dog that has mange. They get it, they jump from dog, one dog to the other pretty easily, and they're intensely itchy. But what do they look like? They look like that, just like any old dog with an allergy. So for these dogs that are intensely itchy, especially the ones that are no longer responding to some of the traditional treatments, I always suggest that you rule out sarcoptic mange in particular. I suggest most of the time starting with this, Salamactin sold under the brand name Revolution. Also consider this available via injection from your veterinarian, Ivermectin. The thing I like about Revolution is not only will it treat sarcoptes, it'll also treat fleas, it'll also treat lice. Kind of ruling them all out at once, which is kind of an awesome option. If you are going to try to treat sarcoptic mange, you're going to need to be treating your dog every two weeks for a minimum of three treatments. Number two, a skin organism that we've talked about a lot, a common secondary inhabitant or thing that overgrows with dogs that have allergies. It just so happens it also makes bread rise. It's yeast. It's not actually the same yeast that makes bread rise. It's a different type of yeast that overgrows in our dog's skin called malassezia. You might see all the same clinical signs that you're used to seeing your dog that has allergies, right? You're gonna see that intense itching, the redness in the groin, and the excessive licking at their paws, maybe the recurring ear infection. Let's have kind of a yellowish color to the skin, might feel especially greasy, but not in all cases. And you can't just visually look at the skin and say, yeah, that dog has a yeast infection. Your vet can do a skin tape test and that's kind of how it would look like under a microscope. Yeah, ta-da, there's a dog that has malassezia or yeast. But honestly, this is a really common, super common secondary inhabitant to overgrow in the skin, causing the intense itching. So for many of the clients I had in the practice, that's what we do. We go ahead and try to rule out yeast as an underlying cause. You can first start with the shampoo. You can get specific veterinary shampoos or you can use this guy here over-the-counter Selsun Blue came selenium sulfide. You wet your dog down first, lather him or her up well. You're gonna leave it on for a full 10 minutes, really concentrating in the cracks and crevices, you know, in the groin, under the armpits. After 10 minutes, you're gonna rinse your dog thoroughly. You wanna repeat that twice a week, do that for a minimum of three weeks. For those topical areas, you can use a cream antifungal, monostat cream or myconazole. It's a great topical anti-yeast medication. You want to apply a small cover to the cracks and crevices, the affected area. You want to be doing that twice a day for 21 days. Then you also want to treat the yeast systemically by giving your dog something orally. Number one, this, aged garlic extract. The second one, this, apple cider vinegar. The dose of this, this colic aged garlic extract is about one capsule, which is 300 milligrams for 50 pounds of body weight daily. Little pipster here, so she's 50 pounds. She'd be getting one of these capsules a day. I do that for 21 days. The apple cider vinegar, we're looking at about one tablespoon for 50 pounds of body weight daily. You can't just give it directly to Pippi, like even though she'll eat everything. You know, if I put a bit of apple cider vinegar on my finger, do you want that? Ooh, ugh, no, not so good. But what you can do is just dilute it into your dog's water 
and or add in a little bit of honey. When there's honey mixed in there, all of a sudden it's sweet, it tastes so much better. You wanna do that as well for the full 21 days. So we've ruled out Sarcoptes, awesome, and some of the other personal parasites, lice for instance. We've gone ahead and treated for yeast, okay. It's unlikely now we're dealing with a secondary yeast infection. Your dog is still itching. What is the last thing I would suggest that you try? Something most of us have never done correctly. Hippie, what is it? What, what am I thinking about? What is like the last thing you should try? This is, as an aside, is an organic dog treat. So yeah, although it's got some dog vitamins in it, it's got, it's got some really good stuff. You know, it's got coconut flour. Applesauce, mm, yum. It is my friends, the food trial. I know this is a big ask, you've got to do a proper food trial. The big principle with a food trial is we're just feeding a minimal number of ingredients. You want to make it really simple and just focus on two things. Things I often suggest, number one, the protein source. Fish is a great option. The big thing is you've got to be feeding a unique protein, a protein that your dog has never had for a minimum of six weeks. This is a great carb source. Many guys have also not had sweet potato. So typically when you're feeding a hypoallergenic diet to your dog, you know, we've got these couple simple ingredients. We've got the fish, we've got the sweet potato. I mean, you go ahead and make your own diet. I mean, you'd be doing like 50% fish, 15% of the carbohydrates, sweet potato for instance, or you can be doing like one third fish, one third carb and one third of veggie that your dog is unlikely to react to. You know, something simple like a carrot, for instance. Also, there are the conventional veterinary diets. So there's now the hydrolyzed protein diets. But honestly, all the best diets, you, you take two simple ingredients, you make your dog's food at home. But you've got to be really, you've got to just be on it and stick with that for a full six weeks. Get these treats, as yummy as they are, eh, there's no way they're gonna fit in in the hypoallergenic diet. So you gotta be really diligent. You're sticking with those one, two or three simple ingredients, feeding those for a minimum of six weeks. You really wanna know, is your dog got a food allergy? And if so, like, then you finally may actually stop all that itching. Yum, you like fish, sweet potato, wouldn't want that. I'm not saying it's easy and in fact it's darn hard. And I can't imagine having to you know, try to figure out Pippi being allergic or Tula being allergic then having them sort of control and all of a sudden like no longer the control on like veteran medications, holistic options, you're ever like, ah. But that's why you need to sort of sequ sequentially go down, you know, rule out sarcoptic mange, right? Rule out yeast, do a proper food trial. And if you follow all those steps, you're probably gonna see far less itching in your dog. And hopefully between those three steps, you're gonna figure out like, okay, this is what's going on. Regardless, I hope that helps and it's maybe giving you a little bit of clarity around like what to do for your itching guy. Thanks for watching. Oh my goodness. Pippi's also thankful that you're watching her in the video because that means she gets a yummy treat. Hooray. I'll talk to you guys again soon. It's Dr. Jones.